All right, today what I'm going to do is walk you through setting up the Scribble toolbar on your iPad. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go to scribble.com and you're going to click sign up for free. Now, we all have Google accounts in our district. So what I would like you to do for your students to make it a lot easier is down below you're going to say that you want to use your Google account to sign up and then kids can just go ahead and use their My Panthers Google account. Um, that way there's not a whole messy process of setting up accounts. Alright, so now that I've added my, um, my password, I'm going to go ahead and click sign in. I'm going to click accept and now I should be in Scribble. Um, I am, I'm just going to say I'm a student and let's get started. What I need to do next is I'm going to have to accept their terms of use. Let's scroll on down and accept that. And then from here, we're going to have to go to the page where it gives me the directions to show up to set up the Scribble toolbar on my iPad. And the way that I'm going to do that is now let's add the toolbar. All right, then up above you're going to notice that there's a, um, a kind of a navigation bar here. You want to go to bookmark click for the iPad. Now from here you can actually just follow the steps. There's a first thing, there's a few things you need to do. The first thing is you're going to go into settings and there's two things you need to check in Safari. The first is you need to check that where it says show favorites bar that that's turned on. That's the first thing to check. The second thing you want to check is if you go into advanced, you want to make sure that JavaScript is turned on. Okay? Then from there, you're going to go back to Safari and you're going to click in the top right hand corner the little box with the up arrow. And what we want to select is we're going to add a bookmark and we're calling it the Scribble Toolbar. When it says location, you want to make sure that it's going into your favorites. And then we're going to click save. What you'll notice is it's adding that toolbar up above to your favorites links. Now, on the website, the second thing we need to do is we need to edit our link. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to scroll down to number three, and you need to copy and paste this whole long complicated thing here. So we're going to click on it, we're going to select all, and we're going to choose copy. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're going to go back to the um, scribbled toolbar and we're going to edit it. The way we're going to do that is we're going to click this book in the top left hand corner, we're going to select favorites if it's not already chosen, and we're going to go to scribble toolbar down in the left hand corner, I'm going to click edit, click on scribble toolbar, and we're going to delete what's below here. So we're going to get rid of that. And instead, we're going to paste what we just copied. Okay? So once we've pasted that in there, we're going to go back to favorites. And now click done. And this is really cool. Now that it's set up, I can go to any website and immediately turn on my Scribble toolbar. All right, so now that the Scribble toolbar is loaded on our iPad, I want to show you how it actually works. So what we need to do is I've just gone to this random website about wolves in Yellowstone. The first thing we want to do is we want to hit Scribble toolbar. Our little link up at the top, you'll notice it loads. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to walk you through some of the tools. So I'm going to scroll down and you'll notice this toolbar kind of follows along with me. Now there's a couple of things you can do with your toolbar. The first is I can highlight. So let's say I'm reading through and I highlight this line that I think is important. Um, if I hit the highlighter tool at the bottom, I can go ahead and highlight that piece of information. I can also change the text of words. So if I want something to stick out um, in a different way, I can highlight it. Uh, maybe I want to choose these years here, and if I hit that text button, the T, I can change the color of that as well. Um, I can also add a little note attached to words. So let's say I choose ecosystem down here. Whoops. 
I don't want all of that. And I want to add a little note to say what ecosystem means. You know, it's a community or it's a biological community, we'll say. It's just kind of a cool way to be annotating throughout um, something that you're reading on your iPad. It's really great for kids, right? A really great active reading strategy. Um, some of the other tools, if I hit this little eye here, it'll turn on and off the annotations that I've added to my page. So if I want to have them not be visible for a moment, I can use the underlining tool, obviously, to underline things. Um, this kind of chart looking thing here, that is my annotation legend. So if I want to write, you know, if I have different colors of highlights, for example, I might say what they mean. Or I might say, you know, whenever something is written in red, this is what that means so that I can make a little legend for it. Um, by the way, to change the color of the tools, so if I did want to use that legend um, piece, I would just click on the tool and then I could select a different color for it. So I could highlight in all kinds of different colors or I could change the text to all kinds of different colors. Um, so that's a lot of different options for you. Same with the notepads. You can choose different colored notepads as well. Last but not least, the cool thing about Scribble is that it is collaborative. So if I click this little link button here, you're going to notice it'll work for a minute and then it's going to give me a unique link. Um, let me scroll back up there. So there's the link. Now if I click unselect, make this page read only, what that will do is that will let me share that link with other people and then they can annotate on top of it as well. We can be annotating collaboratively. If I just want to share it with them but I don't want them to be able to make changes, I'll keep make this page read only selected. So I have that option. And then last but not least, I can click the save button and that will save my annotations to this website so that I can come back to them later. Um, and so if I'm reading from day to day, I can keep those annotations and not have to worry about losing them. Overall, it's a pretty cool tool that can be used as an individual or in a collaborative manner.